hopefully let me start right here and in a few minutes hopefully you'll see uh, one of my homeless friends but I want to start here because it's windy and I'm gonna walk over to the van that he just got um, about and maybe about 30 minutes ago um, I had to kind of like do a self-defense thing today and I've never normally really have to do those types of things and I'm like anybody else that you know if people are getting uh, so I had a friend of mine that was real drunk today and I've known him for a long time and when he's real drunk he wants to like start fights with the other people and today in front of the mission he was very bad like you know really loud and the mission had to tell him to stop it but then I sit outside and uh, there was another friend we were talking about the Lord some new friend I met uh, that really wanted to talk and he was talking for like two hours with me but then this other person is also a friend I realized he was drunk and he had the big uh, glass of beer but it was a little worse today because um, he grabbed me once or twice and so I didn't do real bad but I threw him on the ground and had to slap him in the face and now I was obviously angry but he did a uh, he was grabbed me a couple of times to like fight him now once that was over it was over and that was it okay so he realized that that was it and it would have stopped right there but anyone else that he was like that too would have done the same thing and uh, so I just figured I'd mention that before I walk now and I told my friend I'm talking to my friend Furman now it's windy this is the spot where I used to do a lot of videos with my friend Rick who had died Rick Hart and so I really don't hang out at this point in the past uh, that often now my friend Furman got blessed with a beautiful van okay he needed a nice van and he got a good deal on this van right for three hundred dollars the second I'll be in it but also yesterday when he was asking me some things I felt like I was supposed to uh, do a little update because you haven't seen a lot of my friends in a while. So now hopefully, let me, let me sit. The phone, the phone is on me. But I understand it's so I'll just walk with the camera right on. But you know, yesterday, when I was sitting with Furman, I'm going to have him talk in a second. The night before, I read just one chapter of Mark, one chapter of uh, Acts, and going through now the book of uh, one of the Old Testament books again. But one verse that stuck with me, if I was going to speak, and in Mark chapter 1, I didn't read it again, you know, since the other night, but it talks about the ministry of John the Baptist, and most of us know about John the Baptist because there's prophecies. Jesus said, there is none greater born than women, than John, nevertheless, he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Now, that was Jesus speaking of John, and in Mark chapter 1, it quotes the uh, Isaiah prophecy about John. Uh, we read of this in the Gospels. John was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the paths of the Lord in the desert, make uh, prepare a way for the Lord. So there's prophecies about John. But you know what stuck to my mind, being it's a simple chapter, Mark chapter 1, most of us are familiar with this, but it says he was dressed uh, camel's type skin, leather girdle about his loins, meaning just the basics, like a homeless person. And then it said he ate locusts and wild honey. And if, I, if you look at that chapter, or look at the ministry of John, the thought came to my mind was this. God used John the Baptist in a greater way than all the other prophets, Jesus testified of it. Today I'm speaking about John the Baptist. Most of you that are Bible students have heard the great ministry of John the Baptist. But what did John have? What were the resources that he had? He, he lived off of the insects and he had wild clothing and that was it. So how do we know about John today? We know about the record of John in scripture. We hear about him we, because God provided the most basic need that John needed. And all he needed was to be able to speak the word of God. 
and all the other things that if you looked at a modern ministry today and they pattern themselves sometimes after prophetic ministries and prophets and how many appeals do you get in the normal you don't get that from me but in the normal world of ministry you see many well-meaning people some not so well-meaning are always appealing for money because they have what a prophetic ministry apostolic ministry, whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish but look at the simplicity of John and so when I read that chapter the other night the one thing if I were going to speak which I'm doing now was look at that simplicity God gave him the bare necessities and that was enough to simply proclaim the message Christ is coming he was a, John was a forerunner now as I was sitting with Fermi yesterday and we were having a little talk and he was bringing up different things about his own experience I thought I felt that was was something I should mention now I'll have Furman share well uh, anything he wants well what you just what John just uh, uh, spoke about uh, really just spoke to me right now because I guess I'm uh, I fall in the category of a spoiled Christian uh, John having the, just the bare necessities and, and I have the we all do have the bare necessities and, and, which is the word of God you know and, uh, and I, I always whine like my van needs insurance I need registration or if, if I could only get a my van totally legal or, or maybe a spare tire and this and that and then I could start my ministry you know like church on the street I, I kind of I, I deal with people in the street um, I don't need a, a, a spare tire and all that to do that you know, I, I have what I need and that's God's word in my heart so that, I appreciate that bro and that was the one and, uh, verse and I, I'm, I guess I'm guilty like a lot of other Christians maybe of being spoiled and I, I would do God's work if I only had these things and that's not true uh, we already have what we need, you know, and if you're not doing it with what you have already, then you won't do it when you have those things, neither. Uh, I guess that falls yeah. in the seek ye first the kingdom of God and yeah. His righteousness, then these things will follow. Because yeah. if you're not doing it now, you, I wouldn't do it with a spare tire or insurance and a registration. Uh, if I'm not doing it now, I won't be doing it then, you know, so that, that's an eye opener. The uh, other day, and you know, he's always getting me that way. I like it <laughs> when you guys see my friends, and it's been a while, it's been months since I had any of my friends speak. But the other thing I noticed, uh, I had a couple of good talks today with different people. But one of the guys, I'll give the name, his name is Cody. Now Cody's just a younger, I'd say kid, but I guess Cody's about 30. But Cody's on the street. You know, the other day he said, John, I was at the Stripes on Flower Bluff, a little corner store where we live. He said, and I was feeling, you know, out of it. He said, I had nothing. Now, we all know the different things that the guys go through on the street, so for a moment, familiar with it. He said some lady had given him like maybe five or ten dollars. She just came up to me, wasn't asking. Now I believe Cody. He said, John, I went and bought a couple of the hot dogs or whatever it was. Now he, when he came back outside, he saw another couple we know that have a white van, not Furman, but some other people. He said they pulled up to the stripes. They had no money and they had no money for gas. And Cody had no reason to lie to me. He was just telling me. He said, you know, John, I gave them the rest of that, whatever he bought with the 10. He said, I just gave him the five. Now, I know he was telling the truth because this was no testimony. We were just talking. And I thought, how many of us, if we had zero, like Cody had, or whoever, how many of us, if we had nothing, literally nothing, would take the last five and give it to somebody? So the lesson I, I've learned also from a lot of my friends who are just in the bare minimum, a lot of my friends over the years, they are, what you see uh, on the video is all their possessions for a lot of them. The clothes on their back, and that's it. But there are times that they've showed themselves to be generous, and I feel a lot of the average, if you will, uh, Christian church life, you don't really see people giving their last $5 away or something like that. But it spoke to me again about the dependence, the thing I, I talked about, John the Baptist. Uh, God's the bare necessities we need to accomplish his mission is the ability to speak the word. God brought people to hear John the Baptist. When they came to hear uh, John the Baptist and he was baptizing them, he had enough. He had the Jordan where he baptized in the water and he had the ability to speak the word of God. So I would just encourage all of us. Uh, God gives us things, resources and supplies. We understand that. But don't, don't lose heart of the simplicity of it. Seek you first, like Furman said, the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. And Furman, if you want to say a final word, or are you done? Well, I don't know. I'm going to end it, because I'm going to go into 10 minutes. God bless everybody.